Let's get right to it. It's all but a done deal, as China's communist regime is set to remove the constitutional term limits of President Xi Jinping. If Xi becomes president for life, as it has been reported, it is feared that Beijing will fail to curb the excesses of autocratic leadership. The 64-year-old leader has already appointed himself head of the government bodies that oversee national security, finance, economic reform, and other functions. Chinese officials are defending the move as necessary for stability as Beijing moves forward its long-range domestic agenda and assumes a larger role in the world. Xi Jinping's continuing role is not expected to bode well for Christians in China. Since assuming office in 2013, Xi has overseen a systematic national campaign of Christian persecution. Most notably, the Xi regime has demolished dozens of churches, removed more than a thousand crosses from the country's uh, houses of worship. Most recently, even stricter regulations were implemented, including a requirement that all churches display a sign on their doors prohibiting the entrance of minors under 18, as if liquor were inside. What's not new are the human rights violations. According to the watchdog group Freedom House, security forces across the country detain, harass, torture, or kill believers from various faiths on a daily basis. How a group or individual is treated depends in large part on the level of perceived threat or benefit to Communist Party interests. Upwards of 100 million Christians live in China. For more on all of this, my next guest is the former Bishop of Hong Kong. He's often called the conscience of China. He continues to warn the Holy See against making any deal with Chinese Communists that would allow them a say in the appointment of Catholic bishops. Despite his concerns, a deal seems imminent. For the latest, we're joined by the retired Bishop of Hong Kong, and he's still on the ground there, Joseph Cardinal Zen. Your Eminence, thank you for joining us. Hello. Hello. Uh, I want to begin <laughs> with uh, the, you have been arguing really for years now that there should be no deal between the Vatican and the government of China because it would put at risk the underground Catholic Church. These are the people who have for so long been faithful to the Pope, living in the shadows and really persecuted by the, by the government there. Why are you so suspicious of a deal with the Vatican and the Chinese government? Uh, I never said that there should be no deal, but uh, I say that a bad deal is worse than no deal. Uh, so mm -hmm. better no deal than a bad deal. And so why uh, I say it's going to be a bad deal? Now, uh, all the facts and all the pronouncement from Chinese government give no hope for any good deal, because now they are uh, powerful, now they are arrogant. They are not going to, to, to give you anything. So they, they want a surrender. Now, how can we surrender? Hmm. So that's the point. Uh, hmm. Because uh, you can see the facts. And also because uh, uh, in all these last years, uh, uh, the, Holy See, the Holy See pursued a policy which uh, weakening our church. Hmm. Uh, we are still strong enough now, uh, but much weakened than before. Uh. Huh. So, uh, in what way, in Your a, Eminence? A in what way is it weaker now due to the Holy See's policies? Uh, you see, in all these years, uh, they are uh, tolerating every uh, everything from this official church, uh, these illegitimate bishops. They are arrogant. They are doing. They defy the Holy See, you know, and the Holy See keeps quiet. And then uh, uh, the Holy See is always encouraging the people in the underground and also in the above ground, mm -hmm. the good people, in the, to surrender, to compromise. So they are weakening our church. It's a, it's a kind of a suicide. Mm. So now uh, we are weak and weaker. Mm. So we are not, not in the position uh, to, to get anything. Yeah. Because from a weak position, you cannot get anything in a negotiation. Mm. Your Eminence, you traveled to the Vatican in January, as I mentioned earlier, you hand-delivered a letter to the Pope from the underground Catholic congregation in China so that the Pope would better understand 
why they oppose submitting to the communist regime in this way. Now, the Pope said he would read the letter. Now we learn in a new National Catholic Register interview with Monsignor Anthony Figueredo, who is a consultant to a Vatican dicastery. He's been on the program before. Monsignor Figueredo says he delivered a, quote, heartfelt letter from the seven remaining illicitly ordained government bishops in China asking the pope to restore them to full communion. Now, to the uninformed Catholic reading that, or anybody reading that, you think, well, here are these bishops that the Vatican hasn't confirmed. What's so wrong about normalizing their positions and the Vatican blessing these bishops? Uh, first of all, uh, those letters, uh, I suppose, uh, 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 were written with the permission of the government, uh, because all those bishops are all in the hands of the government. Okay. Mm. Now, how can you believe in the real repentance? Till the last moment, they are doing acts defying the Holy See. You see, mm. these illegitimate bishops, they pontificate, uh, and they even ordain priests. Uh, mm. They just uh, ignore the, the, the authority of the Holy See, and they know the Holy See would not say anything. Uh, so how? Can you believe in such a letter of repentance? Okay. Now, suppose you have reason to believe that. Mm -hmm. Now, sure, the church is always ready to forgive. Huh? So they can absorb from the excommunication, huh? mm -hmm. uh, from the, uh, uh, the illicit act, huh? the sinful illicit act, and the, the criminal act, because if this... Uh, Illegitimate ordination deserves the harshest punishment from the canon law. Means mm -hmm. it's a the 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 the, 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 the most terrible crime they can commit. Huh? So that you can forgive, but how can you recognize recognize them to be bishops, to be shepherds of the flock, to force the the, the faithful to obey to respect these people? How can you do that? Mm. So in your, That's in, your, simply in your mind, Your Eminence, these, these men, these uh, illicitly ordained bishops, are really pawns of the state. They are government operatives who, what do you think, are going to deceive the people? Is that the idea? They will pull in and, and twist theology in time to water down the teachings of the church? Is that your great fear? Now, everybody can know that the Holy See now is going to forgive them because of the pressure from the government, not mm. because they believe in their repentance mm. sincerely. I, I suppose that. Uh, and so it's, it's, a, it's a, a betrayal of our faith. Mm. Incredible. Uh, I'm saying terrible things, uh, but I believe in what I'm saying. Uh, I think uh, uh, what is going to happen is a tragedy. It's a tragedy, yeah. Monsignor Figueredo had this to say when asked about why reconciling with the Vatican and gaining the Pope's recognition is important to these seven government-approved but illicitly ordained bishops that you just mentioned. Here's the quote. He said, there are about 110 dioceses. I don't know the exact figure, but a number of these dioceses are without bishops. Everything is halted in terms of selection, in terms of nomination, which is this long, long process. And it's a limbo situation, with the one nominating and the other excommunicating. It's really in their interest to fill these dioceses, to have bishops in place, and care for the needs of the people, which is at the heart of bishops' concerns. But as you mentioned, Your Eminence, these are members of the Patriotic Association. The, the, these bishops are controlled by the Chinese government. So my question is, how trustworthy are they? And just to give the audience a sense, approximately 60 bishops in China are recognized by both the Vatican and the Chinese government. Nearly 30 are recognized only by the Vatican. Your Eminence. Now, Pope Benedict is a very kind person, very gentle. And he used the word opportunists. Huh? Mm -hmm. So many of the bishops uh, ordained, even with double approval, they are mostly opportunists. Huh? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so they, they know that uh, they have to rely on the government to make a career. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so when you say uh, we want to guarantee the hierarchy in China, I would like them to go back to the times, to the years, and the communist regime in the 
Central Europe. You go to ask uh, the Hungarian uh, people uh, what happened there. Uh, uh -huh. Or uh, uh, Cardinal Parolin said, uh, we guarantee the hierarchy in all those countries. Uh, and he said, uh, uh, when we look for shepherds, we don't look for graduators. Uh, uh, we don't look for people who oppose the government systematically. Uh, we don't look for people who want to show up uh, on the political stage. But mm. they choose all opportunities, people who obey the government. Mm. So they, they are more official of the government than the shepherd of the flock. Now, mm. the people may not uh, realize immediately, but sooner or later they see. And then how can they believe the church anymore? Mm. And the, you, you have to remember that uh, when they... Uh, made a deal with the uh, Hungarian government. Right. They signed also a secret document. But now all those secrets <laughs> are revealed to the whole world. Huh? Mm -hmm. In the secret document, the government says, if any priest says anything against our government, we denounce them to you, and you deal with them. Mm -hmm. So it was a collaboration all to the advantage of the government. Yeah. And very little for the church. And here, and now, here, the that, Chinese yeah. government would be picking the original candidates. In some cases in the past, and people have been quoting history to you, Your Eminence, which I'll read you in a moment, someone saying Cardinal Zen should read more history. Um, historically, <laughs> the church has entered into some of these agreements, but in most of the cases I've come across, the church nominated three selections of bishops, and then the government got to pick one. In this case, the math would be reversed. The Chinese government would be picking the nominees, and the church could pick from one of the three. That seems like a bad pool to pick from. Exactly, exactly. Uh, they say, oh, the, the authority of the pope is saved because the last word still belongs to the pope. But uh, the, the, the problem is, what can be the last word? Uh -huh. uh, how the pope can approve people chosen by the government, but now they choose with any consideration of uh, the likings of the Holy See. Because mm. in this moment, there's no agreement, but there is compromise. And they still pay attention to what, uh, you know, uh, are the choices of the Holy See. But when you give them the power in their hands, they use it fully. And so mm. they make uh, their, their own choice, and the Pope can only veto. But right. I ask how many times he can veto, how many times? He may be embarrassed to, to, to veto uh, for 10 times. Uh, you see, he, I, it, I would prefer the, the opposite. Your Eminence, let them, uh, yeah, your eminence uh, I've read a story where they said after a certain, if the Pope vetoes, uh, you know, after a certain amount of time, there will be a board appointed. I, I expect made up of the Patriotic Association uh, members or bishops who can overrule the Pope. And just ordain the bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say uh, we we uh, consider the the reasons for this veto. Uh, if we find unreasonable, we we go on our way. Mm. So, Your Eminence, I know this is a difficult question for me to ask you, as you are in China right now, but. Um, we now know President Xi, one of his primary objectives is to inculcate communist thought and blend it with theology. That's one of the goals he outlined earlier in the year. Are you concerned that the Vatican is playing into his hand, which uh, his stated goal is to blend the communist agenda with existing religions? that are alive in the country. Is that what's happening here? It's obvious, because now they are uh, uh, giving the, the whole administration of the church into the hands of the so-called uh, 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 patriotic association, but which is just a puppet in the hands of the government. And so it's a, a complete surrender. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Now, you have blamed the Pope's advisors for this deal. You've said it's suicide, you say it's a shameless act of surrender, and that Pope Francis's advisors are obsessed with the Ostpolitik. From my conversations, the Pope's advisors say they need movement here, and this is a chance for the Church to establish status in the country. You would say what? <laughs> that, that's ri ridiculous. You see, 
uh, they say, finally, they acknowledge the Pope as the head of the church. Do we need any acknowledgement? <laughs> eh? Now, it's only on the word. The Chinese are masters in playing with words, you know? Mm. Eh? You know, in China, everything is fake. Eh? It's fake, the medicine and the food, uh, especially the words they say are fake. Eh? So mm. they cheat you. They cheat you. Oh, uh, mm. <laughs> I am uh, not a cartoonist. Eh? I would make a cartoon showing the Pope kneeling and uh, offering the keys of the, the kingdom of, of heaven and say, now, please, recognize me as Pope. <laughs> hmm. that's, that's simply ridiculous. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they recognize the Pope. They're afraid of the Pope. But now the advisors of Pope are giving him advice to renounce his authority. Yeah. Last month, Bishop Marcello Sanchez Sarando, who's the chancellor of the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences, he, after a trip to China, he told the Spanish language edition of the okay. Vatican Insider that, quote, right now, those who are best at implementing the social doctrine of the church are the Chinese. What did you think when you heard that? Please leave him in peace. <laughs> we, we don't have to waste time to talk about that. <laughs> So you don't, you don't uh, think China is living out the social doctrine of the church, I take it? No, that made everybody laugh. Uh, okay, it's a good laugh, yeah. Okay, okay, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I was taken aback, I have to tell you, a few weeks ago when I came across a nasty piece in La Croix. It was by a Jesuit, Father Michael Kelly, in Thailand. He says, quote, Cardinal Zen not only needs to read a bit more history, he also needs to turn the emotional volume down. It... It's some claim to be speaking for half the Catholics in China when he has no actual evidence to support the assertion about people living in the country he hasn't visited in over 20 years. Moralize all you like, but Cardinal Zen offers no path forward. What would you say in response to that? Now, I leave to the people to judge who is more emotional. <laughs> I find his article very much emotional. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact is that uh, we had appointment, uh, and then I invited him uh, to lunch. But he didn't show up. Uh, but uh, uh, his uh, uh, delegate came. Uh, and I told him, I said, I read an article by Father Kelly, mm -hmm. uh, and he said that what is going on is very normal, the church. I said, no, that's not true. It, mm -hmm. No precedent. Uh, this uh, absolutely nova. I, I think he is uh, uh, the the editor of, uh, of the UCAN, right. and uh, he, he reports faithfully my words. So I try to explain that what is happening is uh, absolutely novel, because never uh, the Holy See asked a legitimate bishop to renounce to his office to make place for a excommunicated one. Never happened like that. Huh? And mm. that doesn't take any uh, any uh, deep uh, study of uh, long history. Is a, just, just a look at the church in these last years. Right. Now, nobody can boast seven years of direct experience in China. From 89 to 96, I spent six months a year for seven years in China, teaching in the official church, in the seminaries of official church. Mm -hmm. I met so many bishops. I met so many people of the government. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I need to go back to the, to the old history. Mm -hmm. From this, my a direct, immediate experience, I know that the church is completely enslaved to the government. Mm -hmm. So for a good piece of Father uh, Kelly, uh, I don't think uh, we have to go back to, to the old history. Uh? The, huh. These are the facts today. And I'm, I'm still uh, being kept uh, uh, updated every day. Uh? So many people uh, come discreetly to see me. Uh. Mm. Should the Vatican embrace this deal? I mean, they are now asking bishops, or, or validly ordained bishops, some of whom have been imprisoned for their faith for many years or under house arrest. The Vatican is now asking them to step down, to basically leave their posts so that these government apparatchiks who have been ordained by the government uh, can step in and take their place. What do you think will be the response of the underground community? Will they just eventually come along because they feel the Pope is blessing this patriotic association? Now, Raymond, uh, I don't think uh, 
uh, everybody uh, have clear uh, picture of what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because now we are alarmed by those two cases uh, mm -hmm. of legitimate bishops as to uh, make place to the excommunicated. But they don't talk about the other five cases. They say, oh, no problem. There are seven bishops to be legitimized. Uh? Uh -huh. Now they don't about the other five. But how can they say, they say no problem mm. among the five? Two, everybody know that they have a wife and children hmm. for so many years. Huh? Hmm. But now the Holy said, there's no cogent evidence, that's they say. Okay. <laughs> now, so, okay, now they legitimize the seven Elysian bishops. Right. That's terrible. But even a bigger question should be asked. What will happen to the 30 bishops in the underground? Right. Oh, they say, uh, we recognize the seven, they recognize the 30. Now, you know, there are 70 bishops in the open church and only 30 in the underground. Right. Oh, now, I ask, what do you mean the Beijing government would recognize the 30 underground bishops? Mm -hmm. They wouldn't be allowed to function like underground bishops? Surely not. Mm. So, they are bringing them into the cage. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. It so terrible. they are going to annihilate the underground church. And not only that, because even in the official church, there are still so many good bishops. They are there suffering, or even fighting, and the government is forced to tolerate them. But now, with this new arrangement, they lose every hope in a mm -hmm. better future. Hmm. It's heartbreaking. So it's, it's, it's heartbreaking, Cardinal. It's it's heartbreaking just to hear it. I mean, I, I want to leave you with this very quickly. The, the the China or the Asia Times rather this week, uh, in in an article, a Chinese priest offered his thoughts about the talks between China and the Vatican, and he said that despite the talks, quote, I think we must have a spirit of perseverance and be ready for martyrdom in order for the Catholic faith to spread in China. How accurate do you think those sentiments are? Oh, now, now, now the, the word martyrdom is anathema for, for many people. Uh, people say uh, Cardinal Zeng is pushing everybody to be martyrs. Huh? Now, I never prayed for martyrdom. Huh? But if God wants us uh, to give such a witness to, to the faith, it's the grace, and he would give us the strength. Huh? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I, I know the, 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 uh, the feeling of the people in China. Huh? Mm -hmm. So, uh, with good peace of Father Kelly, I know much, much than he knows. Huh? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, really, we have to pray because uh, uh, what, what, what is, is coming is a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll uh, uh, weaken the faith, huh? uh, and we are going back to the, to the times of catacombs. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, we can take that uh, if uh, it's God's will. Yeah? Mm. Well, Your Eminence, I thank you so much for joining us. Know that uh, you and your people are in our prayers, and we will continue to cover this story. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Before we go to break, on the eve of Pope Francis's fifth anniversary as pontiff, the Pew Research Center has published a survey of what American Catholics think of him. The results are interesting. Overall, most have a favorable view of the Pope, but his support may be slipping in several areas. Francis's favorability rating has dropped a few points from its high of 90 percent three years ago to a still respectable 84 percent. The number of Catholics who think Francis is too liberal has grown in the last five years, from 19 percent to 34 percent. The number of Catholics who think him naive has gone from 15 to 24 percent. In 2013, 84 percent of Catholics said the Pope was doing an excellent or good job. But today, that figure stands at 70 percent. His loss of support is most dramatic among Republicans. When elected, 60 percent of Republicans thought the Pope was a change for the better. Today, that number has fallen to 37 percent. 
On addressing the sex abuse scandal in 2013, 55% of those surveyed rated his efforts as excellent or good. But now, only 45% feel that way, while 46% say he's doing only a fair or poor job. The Pew survey also found that the Pope's popularity has not translated into a so-called Francis effect, where Catholic churches are filled, where people are returning to the faith. 22% of Americans surveyed in 2012, before his election, identified as Catholic, compared with just 20% in 2017, when the survey was taken. Mass attendance has stayed constant throughout the pontificate of Francis, with four in ten Catholics saying they attend weekly.